Hey folks, it's us, podcasting wonderkins John Bishop and Lucas Southworth. Although this is a podcast about cars, it is not age-appropriate for the target demographic of these films, as we usually end up talking about the reproductive organs of Lightning McQueen. Alright, now let's take a look under the hood. Good evening, race fans. That is the title of this episode on Zencaster, and uh, decided to go that direction. This is the Kachat, the only podcast brave enough to ask the question, hey, what's up with cars? I'm John Bishop. And I'm Lucas Southworth. All right, so what are we talking about this week, Lucas? Okay, so you remember last week when you were like, yeah, we're going to talk about racing, and we didn't really super know what that meant, but we were going to talk about it, but then we got s- sidetracked by the Radiator Springs 500 and a half. Yes, I remember that very distinctly, almost like it was last week. Wow. Time still exists. That's mm-hmm. weird. Doesn't feel like it, though. Gosh, it sure don't, though. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about racing. We're taking what we were going to talk about last week, and we're going to talk about it this time. Also, since you mentioned it, that's Good Evening Race Fans is probably the title of the actual episode now, too. Okay. So look at what power you hold, wield in your hands. Nice. So let's talk about racing. That does bring me to, to a, a question, question from, from Liz. Liz. Yep. <laughs> Both of our significant others are named Elizabeth. They ask us questions. We don't tell you which ask. That that's the whole joke. Uh, I'm just going to use the one from last week, since it was also about racing. Don't you guys do that every week? That being talk about racing. And, and yeah. uh, I gotta say, no. No, we talk about a lot of things, but mostly we talk about genitals. Gosh, we sure do. We got asked by a uh, friend of a friend on Twitter, uh, how did the cars f- mm. And yeah, it was just very stark because living in this bubble of doing this podcast, I was like, Well, obviously, they must know we've dedicated so many hours of our podcast talking about this. But no, not many people know that we have done that (laughs) when it Mm. on the scale of the universe. Yep. It's Uh, not that strange. It's strange to be asked that question simply because if you're asking that question, one would presume that you've got some amount of experience with either the podcast or at least us. And if you know us and you know we've got a podcast talking about Disney Pixar's cars you know we're going to talk about how they smash. So I did a, if I don't know, if you care to see my answer, that's on Twitter. You can find it. Click tweets and replies when you go to the profile. That's a pro tip for you. Hmm. Uh, uh, but yeah, we're not, well, honestly, we one, we've already talk, talked about it, uh, and we're probably also going to talk about it more, just knowing ourselves. I was going to say, that's not what we're going to talk about this week, but I just can't in good conscience say that, John. That's very fair and reasonable, and honestly, it's the only responsible thing to say. This was your idea. What what what, what <clears throat> have you brought to the table to talk about this week? In regards to what? Racing, not car sex. Well, that brings me to a question from Liz. Question Thank from you. Liz this week is, uh, how fast? Hmm, challenging. Which of the two subjects we've been going back and forth about is that about? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I could have... Seen that answer coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to Google Lightning McQueen top speed. We know that he typically goes around like 193-ish, like in Cars 3, mm-hmm. compared to like 210s of uh, Jackson Storm. Which brings me to a fun huh. fact of the day. The average speed of a stock car is 160 miles per hour even though they are capable of going about 200 miles per hour. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much what I found. I googled Lightning McQueen top speed, and the way it was written was 200 miles per hour dash 330 kilometers per hour, which I didn't see the kilometers per hour, so I thought they were saying, it's somewhere in between 200 and 330 miles per hour. It's like, that's too big of a range to (laughs) give, but they were just saying... That that's what it was converted to the 
system of measurement that makes honestly just more sense. So racing in this universe, uh, I mentioned in the fun fact last week that there's some weird stuff going on with the, uh, what's it called? Nike airfoil or something? Yes. The, the fancy shoe that makes it too easy to run. Which brings me to my fun fact of the day. Uh, okay. if you've, if you've been keeping track and watching, uh, film theory, then you'll know that that was a shoe that was mentioned in his latest episode, which did come out after our episode, which means, uh, there's a chance that Matt Pat's a fan of the show. You can think that as much as you want, and I'm just not going to correct it, bud. All right. W- what's one of our biggest states of listeners, Lucas? California? Is that where you're going for? Uh-huh. And where does Matt Pat live? I mean, clearly he lives in California because you've said <laughs> this, but I want it on record that I didn't know that. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> that works. <laughs> All right. So, in racing... Uh-huh. In racing, in our world, like, sure, there there is a following, and I'm talking about, like, any kind of racing in general, but I can't think of a single type of racing that is considered to be, like, the biggest sport. I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. Like, if anyone thinks biggest sport in the world, they should probably think soccer or football, if you're not American. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So there's that. And then you think, well, what's America's sport? And you think, well, it's baseball, but also the most popular is probably football in America. And then you think about other famous sports throughout the world. And like, you can get to a lot of things before you'll get to racing. Like, you'll get, you'll get to cricket before then you get to tennis, golf, and then somewhere along that line, you'll get to racing. Yes. And you can say what you want about how there's a component of racing in a lot of sports. Like you have to run the bases as fast as you can at times. And uh, football is you're trying to run faster than the other team to the other side. And there's all that jazz. But in the world of cars, we're talking about the very basic type of racing of, oh, you are trying to go fast. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And. I will say that while it's not super popular nowadays, and I don't know this, but like, I don't know, it sounds true, so I'm going to say it. I'm sure racing was like maybe one of the first sports, just like, you know, in uh, times of the ancient Olympics, uh, they had other aspects where they threw things basically and wrestled and stuff. But track and field has always been, I mean, it's just the simplest thing you can do. Who can get from here to there faster? So I don't know. It's very primal. It's very, it's been around forever, but like, it's not super popular. Which brings me to my nonsense factoid of the day, which is a random uh, thing that I've heard before that doesn't sound true because it sounds like complete and utter nonsense. And that is that uh, humans are the most capable long distance runners in the animal kingdom. I doubt that very much. But I've heard it, and the theory behind it is that we have the buttocks, and that is what allows us to run for far greater distances. And uh, with that, the theory is that we used to chase down animals, and no matter how fast they could run, we could outrun them to the point where their bodies would overwork themselves and their hearts would stop, and we would just still be chasing them. Yeah, I, I've I've heard this as well. We were apparently endurance hunters in the fact that mm-hmm. uh, either they would literally just, you know, croak from trying to get away from us for too long, or they would get tired enough that we could catch up and then, you know, take them out, which, man, that's pretty bonkers. Mm-hmm. And it's all because our butt. Man, I'm always happy I have a butt. Like, I'll go on ro- record on that, you know? I am grateful for my butt, but, you know, even more now. Mm-hmm. Because without your butt, you couldn't chase down wild animals until their hearts give out. And, man, it's the only thing that gives me joy. It's the only thing that makes me feel alive. It's the only thing that makes me feel. Uh, okay, so back to just, like, the the whole concept of this is... I can't imagine how boring I would find this whole thing in this world. I feel like I'd yeah. be one of the fans of this 
what I would hope is a legal sport of demolition derby far before I would be a fan of just general racing. Yeah, and I mean, we have, like, you know, NASCAR in our universe, and man, do I find that pretty boring. <laughs> mm-hmm. One thing I wanted to, like, talk about this episode was, like, how the rules might work in the Cars universe versus how they work in our universe. But I'll tell you what, I looked up the rules for NASCAR, and I mm-hmm. still don't know them. That's fair enough, man. I know there's, like, yellow... <laughs> what? <laughs> there's, like, a car There's like a car that comes out that makes them all slow down, a special car, and it makes them slow down because oh. something has happened. Uh, it's a plot point, I remember, in the first Cars movie, because he's getting a pit stop, uh, and it's when... Uh, Guido proves himself to be the fastest pit stop uh, this side of the Mississippi uh, because he has to get out before the whatever it's called car because they're all stuck behind it because there's just been like a wreck or something. And I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me (laughs) why that's the case, but I couldn't tell you because like if he can get out in front of the caution car, I'm going to call it the caution car. Then like, what's the point of having the caution car? (laughs) Uh, I guess to, I don't know, let the racers know that they're not currently racing, maybe? Even worse, I looked up the rules, and I tried to look up just the basic rules of how do you win a NASCAR race, and I still do not know. Because I I looked it up, and what I found was an explanation of a point system that talks about, like, the entire season and how you get, like, 40-ish points for a win in a game and you get less points if you come in second third and whatnot place but that didn't explain how you win and it was frustrating because i checked several websites for this and i could only find the same result over and over again of oh well racing during the season you get different points depending on your place in each race and i'm just so confused because like i don't i don't get it yeah i i mean and I'll say it's because I haven't ever taken the time to watch a race because, again, they're just boring as sin. It's just... And, like, I know that the wrecks are interesting, but I can't watch for those because that feels very morally wrong. (laughs) You can't watch for the exciting part because the exciting part is a person putting their life in danger and almost definitely dying. Yeah, well, NASCAR's gotten more and more safe but still i don't know man it's not great yeah it's it's the same feeling i get just watching football at all anymore Mm -hmm. but i mean you watch what's it called the sandra bullock movie the blind side yeah if you watch the first like two minutes it shows a football game in which someone gets hit and then if you don't see it the first time they'll slow it down and zoom in so that you can see a man's leg being snapped in the wrong direction. Oof. It's very upsetting. Yeah, and I I will mention, though, uh, in terms of me finding racing boring, I also pretty much find, like, track and field events at the Olympics boring, but I find them a lot less boring just because they're people, you know? And, like, like... not even the ones where they do cool jumps and stuff. Like, even, like, the the sprints and the run, the, I don't know, 2,000 meters? I'm going to say that's a race in the Olympics, uh, where it's, like, longer and they go a while. Just because I can, like, see faces, I can see them straining, I can put a story on them a little easier, I think, is the big thing. So maybe in this universe, that's a huge component of it. Why they find it so interesting is that it combines the uh like excitement of these cars moving at hundreds of miles per hour with the like personal connection of literally seeing a face and it just being that like being exerting itself not you know using a machine i don't know which one i find more interesting or boring but i gotta say i even track and field is just super boring for me to watch No, I'm not saying I find it super interesting. I'm saying I find it a little more interesting than, like, car races. See, I think I find them both so not interesting that it's hard for me to even, like, guess which one I find less interesting. 
I'd yeah, say just... initially I would find uh, like NASCAR type racing to be a lot more exciting at the very beginning. Like, oh, they're going so fast. That's intense. And then very quickly it becomes, oh, how many more laps? Oh, okay. Okay. And like the Indy 500 takes like half an hour. Uh, no, no, that's not true. Three and a half hours. <laughs> I was about to say, these cars are going a lot faster than I thought they were. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that doesn't... Hmm, that would make them have to go a thousand miles vis-a-vis, you know, the name of the race, referring to how long it is. Uh, <laughs> I figured it out. Uh, but yeah, they it, three and a half hours is a long time to watch cars go in a circle. At least like, mm-hmm. I don't know, I think like 5,000 meter. Yeah. That's like 13 minutes, which is still a long time to watch something go in a circle. But man, it's not three and a half hours, huh? Yeah, three and a half hours is way too long. Oh boy, howdy. That You know a marathon? Like, the the if you're competitive about it, the thing to beat is like just under two hours. That means this car race lasts for an hour and a half longer and yes, I understand that they're traveling a lot farther, but just considering the fact that it's 26 point something miles and a person's running that and they're running, what is it, a mile in sub two minutes for that long? That's insane. Yeah. And again, it, it's about, and like, I am not saying for a second that like this like level of car racing is not physically exerting and like very difficult but it's easier for me to connect with how difficult just running is because like running just at all feels very hard to me Mm -hmm. but driving a car i'm like i that's that's easy i do that to work that's fine and my brain doesn't make the connection even though like if i think about it i'm like of course this is incredibly difficult and highly skilled my brain is more easily able to understand that running is hard. Yeah. It's like considering the difference between like competitive video games Mm -hmm. versus other sorts of sports. It's weird to think, oh yeah, well it is extremely difficult to compete against any of those players. But at the same time, it's a very different kind of difficult. Like it's a Mm -hmm. completely different kind of exertion of, oh, you just have to do this for long enough and with the right people and the right circumstances and all this stuff so that you you get skilled enough rather than every single time you do it, you have to physically push yourself in a very intense way. And like, the biggest difference, it it's, reminds me of how my father always taught me to work hard. And the way he did that is through just physical labor. I would always push myself with, oh, I'm mowing a lawn for five hours in blazing heat and it's a push mower and it's terrible. And then like you compare that to college when you don't know that you have ADHD and you're just like, wow, I'm spending hours just destroying my brain and emotionally devastating myself working hard, but in a way that's completely different. Yeah. And one last thing about it, I feel like is, my brain also understands that if I were to like, I don't know, attempt to block an NFL linebacker or something, I would be exhausted and in incredible pain afterwards. <laughs> but if I were to like play a match against like, I don't know, MK Leo, who is like the number one ranked Super Smash Brothers player in the world right now, it would one end within 30 seconds. Uh, and I, w- I would just be like, well, That was fine. I didn't really know what was happening, uh, but eh, I'm going to, you know, keep playing, I guess. I like this game. I like Smash Brothers. If you didn't know that about me, audience, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not that good at it, but I main Piranha Plant, so that's me. You know a fact about me. Plant gang, hashtag, rise up. Uh, (laughs) Were we talking about cars? We were. Cool. Cool. Let's do that some more. But yeah, we're talking about like the differences in difficulty and whatnot. And like the thing is, someone did a study of like trying to figure out uh, why it is or how many people think they could get a point off of a professional in a sport. 
And the specific study, I believe, was like talking about sexism and whatnot, because it was uh, Serena Williams, like how many people with no skill think that they might be able to get a point off of Serena Williams in tennis. See, like, I don't know if it's necessarily sexism or just people being stupid, because like if someone's a professional at a sport and you don't play that sport, they're going to destroy you, let alone. Uh, like a the, once in a generation talent like Serena Williams. A person who is intensely famous at being good at the sport. Oh, but like you think about that and then I think about how like, oh, those people are so dumb. And I'm not saying that I could do well at all against a professional racer, like NASCAR racer. But I will say that I feel like comparatively I would do better against a uh, NASCAR professional in a NASCAR race than I would against say like Usain Bolt in any sort of just foot race. See, I'm going to say that I don't feel that way, but that's just because in my brain, I feel like I would die if I (laughs) was just in a like full field of a NASCAR race and like tried to win but at least, like, I would finish about, like, a full ten minutes after Usain Bolt and be, like, pretty winded, embarrassingly so. But, like, I don't know, I'd be alive. <laughs> See, it's far more amusing that you say that when I think about the fact that I'm pretty sure his whole thing is the 100-meter dash. No, John, I know he's a short-distance <laughs> racer. I would finish ten minutes after him, somehow. <laughs> his his time is, like, I'd take seven a break. seconds. <laughs> take a nap I'd sit down for a while <laughs> uh, and here's the thing i'm not saying i would do well at all against a professional nascar racer i'm not saying that i would have any amount of a chance if if that's what it seems like i'm saying i assure you no, that's I not what i'm trying to say i'm just saying i feel like the car in some way will equalize it because yeah. i feel like I still feel like I'm better at driving than I am at running. And I feel like it's just because like to a certain extent, it's just the car and your familiarity with it rather than, yeah, with racing, you have to push yourself to an extreme every day in a way that advances itself to the point where you reach Captain America level of peak physical fitness. Yeah. I mean, Olympians are the example of like peak human, like physical achievement. And that's, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. Like, there's a reason for that. Yeah. I even, there was a YouTube video on a series that was like epic how to, and they were like, okay, if you want to win the Olympics, here's your best possible way of doing it. And it was, okay. So you pick the uh, sport that requires the least physical fitness And has the least amount of participants in it and has a chance that you can get your country to put you in for it and has no restrictions on age or anything like that. And even still, with all of that, it doesn't seem like I could even stand a chance. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but I think it was like that thing where you toss a heavy weight well, you slide a heavy weight and then people brush the ice to make it smooth. Curling. Curling. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the sport. They were like, yeah, this is the one that is statistically going to be your best shot. And I was like, okay, acknowledging that most of these people are technically overweight that you are giving examples of and all this stuff. I still would not have the hand-eye coordination these people have. Yeah. <sighs> so I, I best chances. So I, I, I think that what I was saying earlier about at what at least makes it more interesting uh, in the cars verse is that it combines both like the technical precision required by NASCAR drivers with the like very real like the cars understand how physically exerting it is because it's been shown that driving can be physically exerting like lightning passes out. No, he doesn't pass out, but like his vision blurs a little bit. I remember when he pushes himself. Uh, and he's like out of breath a little bit in some pit stops uh, in Cars 3. Uh, Which brings me to my not very fun fact of the day. 
Okay, I was just going to say that makes it more interesting because it combines the two. Go ahead. <laughs> yep. Uh, you're talking about how it can be physically exerting, which brings me to a list that I found when I was doing my research for NASCAR. And it was this list about how they're like the five misconceptions about NASCAR. And one of them was, oh, yeah, it's a lot more difficult for a lot of reasons. And one of the reasons listed was you have to use the bathroom beforehand and be able to hold it for the entire race. Uh, and and that was hours, just an yeah. interesting little thing for me. Like, okay, so like your example of how this is underestimated level of difficulty is don't pee yourself. Okay. And on this same list, it was a list of five and two of the things listed of misconceptions for NASCAR were the same thing. And it was upsetting because it was like number five. It's not just for rednecks. And then number one, I think, was it's not just for uh, country bumpkins and dumb hick rednecks. I was just like, okay, clearly this person who's making this list has some sort of complex because they mentioned that twice. And one of them was the least important. And one of them was the most important. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Again, these are... These are world class talents. It's not just for rednecks, but like it's it's okay. You're fine. Yeah. And like a predominant number of fans would self identify as rednecks. Oh, fully. Like, that's that's okay. It sure you may not like the term redneck or anything like that, but like it's okay to belong to a region of a country. Like you shouldn't feel shame about that and, and even if you don't belong to that region and you're a fan, you shouldn't feel bad just because people think you like something that's for rednecks. It's, yeah. it's weird. I mean, if you like NASCAR, you might be a redneck, you know? Is Here's that what Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy says? Is, mm -hmm. that, is that what he says? Cool. Does he do it in that order? Does he say, like, if you do this thing, you might be a redneck? Or does he say, you might be a redneck if you do this thing? I don't know that I've ever listened to Jeff Foxworthy. I think it's both. I think it just, I okay. think it goes either way. I think like, I think all four of them had a catchphrase and yeah. his was probably the most flexible because it's like, you might mm -hmm. be a redneck if, or if this, you might be a redneck. And then one of them just would make a joke and say, here's your sign. And then one of them like would just tell the same joke over, over again. And the, punchline was his catchphrase which is something like they call me tater salad hmm. and then there's good old mater slash uh layer the cable guy who would just say get her done and that was it like his catchphrase sure would. wasn't a part of the joke it, it's just an exclamation john's referring to the four people john's referring to are the blue comedy comedy tour blue collar comedy called? tour this is a, you know Jeff Foxworthy, Larry the Cable Guy. I've Googled it because I didn't know the other two. They're Ron White and Bill Ingvall. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that was a thing that happened a while ago. Do you want to talk more about how cars race? We've talked about racing a lot. We haven't talked about the the Pixar, the Disney Pixar movie Cars that much. I will point out. All right. So racing is their big sport. Yes. Esports exist in our world, and I assume yes. they exist in their world. But even in their world, I feel like eSport, like the most popular one, would still be racing. And that's very upsetting to me. John, I'm going to pivot this because you've given me an idea. What if in the Carsverse, Rocket League is real? John? Okay. What if What if they play real life Rocket League? We know demolition derbies are a thing. And we know that because spies exist and have crazy technology that rocket league could be a thing yeah if you don't know what rocket league is it's cars play soccer with like big rockets on their back that's literally it mm -hmm. it's incredibly fun if you're good at it i'm very bad at it <laughs> i i don't know if i've ever played it i want to and it's been on sale several times and i just haven't gotten it i think they pl pr probably play if not rocket powered soccer, which if that's the case, I'll be a little upset, but I'll take just like the cars just playing soccer with a ball that's bigger than them and knocking it really hard around because that would still be very fun. 
I mean, I think that's awesome when real life people do it. Yeah. <laughs> Even better when people are kind of the ball because they're wearing those giant weird inflatable clear balls and they're playing soccer and they just like ram into each other yeah i think I that i think i know this is our racing episode not our sports episode but i'm gonna say that they do play soccer and that's how they're like rock you know rocket league it's like that i hope so i don't know but i hope so i wish more real Ooh. world sports were like that and by like that i mean just like ridiculous like have you ever seen uh american gladiator oh yeah. Did you know that Terry Crews also got his start in an American Gladiator type show? I think I did. Yeah, because he was he was a, a football player and that was his first like acting-ish gig. Mm-hmm. His first like TV gig. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, Terry Crews. What a wonderful man. He seems like a really cool guy. And I'm always a little mm-hmm. wary of celebrities just like not believing that they're actually cool people. But he's one of the ones that I believe more than others. Okay. I've got another dumb angle similar to Rocket League. Mm -hmm. You know how in like, especially in older movies, like the two rival sort of like greaser gangs will race for pink slips. Oh boy. Yeah. Like race to own each other's car. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to make that work. You don't don't know how to make that that concept. Some, uh, I know it's just shoes. Just make it your tires. Okay. That would, it would be an equivalent. I'm not sure. I mean, the other option is indentured servitude. Uh, it would be slavery. We can say it would be slavery because they would fully own you if that, if we're doing it one to one. Well, if we're doing it one to one, yeah. But I mean, even then it would bro- it would be, if we're believing a squishy bit, you would just have to give them your body. Now that's okay. This has led me to another thing. Do we think that like the DMV exists and they have to like get the get a title for them basically themselves? Like do they have to do they have to have a title and registration for either themselves or their like full car shell if we're assuming it's like an Iron Man suit? I'm thinking it's more like that is your birth certificate slash like driver's license. Yeah. Yeah. Just like it's your identification. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Maybe akin to like a social security number. Absolutely. So if that's the case, there would be documents but that they could race for. But again, that's not a great result. <laughs> you're racing for social security numbers? Yeah, instead of the, your car, like they don't own you. They own your identity and then will, you know, <laughs> commit legal identity fraud, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's not fraud at that point. It's just they can put out credit cards in your name and there's nothing you can do about it. No, yeah, I just didn't know how to describe it other than legal identity fraud. Yep. All right, so switching back to kind of car racing and things legal and whatnot and racing for shoes, I guess. I talked about how there's the shoe that they're considering banning and whatnot. Yes. We know that they have like debacles of oh you raced within legal fuel that is a, a enhancing fuel you think that's an issue of oh your tires make you better at racing so you have to use different tires because hmm. we know that jackson storm is like designed to be better yeah that's that's fully what i was going to bring up there are cars who are just literally mechanically better but again, then, like, we talk even in cars too. There's just different types of racing vehicles. You have a Formula One racing a dragster, racing a stock car. All of those types of cars in the same bunch of types of races, and it's just so weird to me. Of oh, some of these cars are designed for this sort of thing, and some of them just really aren't. Yeah, because <sighs> I think it's something we talked about a lot. Because we assumed that if Lightning could just switch out his kit to Jackson's kit, he would have done it. Which Mm -hmm. implies, you know, since he didn't do it, he can't do that. So you can't just say, you know, I don't know, you have to, you can't just say like, they have access to this stuff. Because if he did, he would have done it. I don't Mm -hmm. know, that's weird. I know it's a point we added headlights. but gosh, this movie's so inconsistent. Like, Mm mm-hmm. What can they and can't they add and take away? Gosh. They can take away something that defines them. 
And the thing that defines uh, Dusty Crop Hopper was his crop duster. And he just took that off willy nilly. It was easy. But lightning can't get a new engine, even though we know the engine isn't a squishy bit. And I mean, it was this isn't a canon scene, but like in that one scene, that deleted scene from Cars 1 in which he dreams that they put his engine into a steamroller and then he was that steamroller. That implies that like the engine is some sort of important like part of their being. Mm -hmm. It's real weird and also not very consistent. And then (laughs) like even worse, one of the things they were talking about was like the aerodynamics of his design. That means he fully could have changed that. And he did change that in that movie to his old version. Because if you remember, his old body got torn to shreds and then he just got everything replaced. Yeah, and like in the short we watched last week, he changes his full kit out, like suspension, wheels. His mm-hmm. he's like body is a little bit different because it's an off-road race. So why didn't he just do that for Cars 3? I couldn't tell you. <sighs> Okay, we know that it's just a plot hole. We, John and Lucas, know that. But the whole point of our show is to make plot holes into... Canon? Is to say they're not plot holes. It implies this. So what does that imply? All right, so... Yeah. We know that Dusty needed a new engine block. And he couldn't just get a different engine And we know that in that deleted short, the engine provided the consciousness. And we know that if you want to make car go good fast, it might be a good idea to get a better engine for that. So if you want to make car go good fast, you might want to get a better engine for that. Sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) So what I'm thinking is for some reason, the engine is not something that can be changed. Yeah, which I think is a conclusion we've come to before, especially in Cars 2, because all the lemons are a huge, huge uh, uh, piece of evidence for that, because they just get new engines. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they were poor. They were some of the richest beings on the planet. (laughs) And then you talk about, okay, why? Is it organic? And then you remember in Planes 2 when very, very clearly Dusty's engine is completely mechanical. So I have to assume that for some reason, although the engine is mechanical, it is essential to the life of the squishy bit. Yeah. It is somehow the life support for the being inside of the suit. Yeah, I was also maybe thinking that like maybe there's some sort of like attachment of a squishy bit to it. Mm -hmm. like it also like a heart maybe yeah i guess a heart would be the most like it it basically powers the squishy bit which is what you were saying by life support i'm now seeing uh but Mm -hmm. uh so if you took that out they would immediately die like they're Mm -hmm. like there's no like equivalent heart transplant they would just straight up die yeah and even if there was an equivalent heart transplant it would be something like oh well the attachment that you have organically only fits this specific engine. So if you could replace your engine, it would have to be with the same kind of engine. Yeah, which is like a compatibility is a huge thing with organ transplants. It just may be Mm -hmm. like more direct in this universe. Because they were talking about getting him a new engine, Dusty, but the Uh new one they were looking for was the exact same model. So I think it was a, it's like a donor type thing where you have to have a compatible organ or engine in this case. Yeah. So I think that checks out. I I, real quick. uh, I think the only reason I'm going to say he didn't change out his body because he clearly could have just for vanity's sake. He was saying, I am lightning McQueen. My fans look at me. They know me. They look, I look like this and I'm not going to change that for Jackson storm. You go ahead with your thing. There's a type of heart that you can get. It's a mechanical one and it replaces mm-hmm. your heart. But the side effect of it is it constantly cycles your blood, which means you don't have a heartbeat anymore. 
that's like I know like factually that's not spooky, but on like an emotional level, I really hate that. Yeah. I don't like thinking about it. I knew it's that. It's good. It's good that that exists. Still spooky. Just uh, like so many things in this little little blue marble we call home, huh, Johnny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't All right, know why I so took that tone. One thing one thing you were talking about is how <laughs> it was vanity. But if you say it's vanity, you have to consider the fact that famously they change how they look entirely in regards to paint jobs at the drop of a hat. But maybe like paint jobs we've talked about maybe being an equivalent either clothes or tattoos. But like I guess changing your full like your silhouette changing that to your me bone is, structure yeah like like basically it seems like to me it would be an equivalent of like a racer being like hey we can make you about six inches shorter which would for some reason help you and him being like well that's i'm not gonna do that that's that's too much and it would sort of change me as a person in a way i'm not personally comfortable with and the only reason he did it for Stanley was because the poltergeist forced him to. Yeah, he was possessed. He mm-hmm. was wearing, you don't want to wear a ghost's clothes on a day that's important to the ghost right next to the ghost statue slash maybe final resting place. That that's you have also super... at one point defiled. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> He was, uh, was lightning was fully possessed. I know that that was last week's episode, but lightning was fully possessed for all of that. It was Stanley putting on a show and both punishing lightning because I'm going to say lightning was conscious for all of it. He was mm-hmm. just a passenger in his own body and then just also punishing these other guys. He was planning on doing it to lightning anyway, but he was like, cool, some more jerks. I can <laughs> go show a bunch of dead bodies. <laughs> New theory, Words. Stanley oftentimes does possess Lightning McQueen, but that specifically is why Lightning doesn't remember a lot of his adventures with Mater, is because okay. during those adventures he's possessed, which explains why in one of them he has lightning powers, because in that one he has ghost powers. John, I remember saying almost exactly this uh, in regards to another thing. But if during Mater's Tall Tales, you're like, okay, okay, okay. What if he's being possessed by the ghost of Stanley? (laughs) Again, I would have just been like, no, John, like we say stupid stuff all the time, but we can't, it has to make sense. But now it makes sense. So I'm all here. I'm for it, man. I don't know that it makes sense, but it makes more sense. There's a reason to have said it, at least. Yes, that's it. All right. Okay. So, yep. Lightning definitely gets possessed occasionally. And he Sorry. doesn't like he doesn't like the limited control that gives him over his own fate. So whenever he can, he makes sure to not change himself, like at least yes. silhouette wise, because it's it's one thing that he has control over. Man, pretty dark. <laughs> mm-hmm. Lightning has had a fear of loss of control ever since he was kidnapped by this town and forced to do manual labor. Yeah, and I can only imagine that literally physically losing control and crashing in Cars 3 did not help that. Mm-hmm. It's real spooky. Hmm. I haven't done the wiki quote. I'm going to do that. Of the day. That's the Give title. Me of this that I haven't done it. Of the day. <laughs> cool. Uh, I, I had a fully different one planned out, but then when I looked up Lightning's top speed earlier, uh, I... It took me to uh, pixar.fandom.com. Uh, That's your and favorite. And on the side. No, John, worldofcarsdriving.fandom.com is my favorite. How could you? Uh, you're right. You're right. I should have, uh, like, I shouldn't have let it slip through my, my lips. I, I should have known. It felt wrong. Yeah. Think before you talk, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, over in the side, it showed me, like, most recently uh, updated articles. And right at the top was pixar.fandom.com slash wiki slash adult underscore humor. Good. Which, as you might expect, is examples throughout different Pixar movies of, uh, you know, adult jokes. Some of them are pretty big stretches, 
some of them aren't i will say some of them are like pretty pretty blatant but uh just the way they they yeah but the way they they will tell you the joke and then explain it to you (laughs) in a way that i really like like one of them is when lightning explains to mater late one night that sally's going to let him stay at the motel mater replies oh getting that cozy at the cone is we he was probably referring to lightning and sally having sex at the motel (laughs) which um no he was clearly talking about the fact that they're called the cozy cones uh here's another one mater then giggles lightly taps him and says nah i'm just kidding she just likes me for my body he then leans to one side and moves his bottom eyelid up as if he was getting horny slashed aroused about that remark <laughs> uh, of, of course uh uh he did what in his cup is in here but like that one's not that funny i just thought you would appreciate it being here yep uh, it's real good but my favorite but this one is before leaving the bathroom mentioned above being the one in cars Two where the bidet is that just just demolishes mater uh <laughs> mater warms uh warns grim and acer when she starts giggling prepare to be squirted (laughs) and then it says this is a reference to ejaculation um okay yeah yeah that's that's a that's i mean yep okay last one okay two more (laughs) (laughs) Uh, another car steal one in paris when mater meets the owner of a headlights market he is scared off when the owner's eyes are on the headlights, this signifies that the eyes are, in a human's case, on the breast. So whoever added that agrees with us about what car headlights are. So that's really fun. listens to the podcasts. Yeah. So like, uh, please, I hope. No, there's no citation. They didn't cite us. Can you imagine if we got cited? I would talk about it for years, years afterwards. Yeah. But the very that'd be amazing. The, the very last one is when Mater is given a vampire disguise, he remarks, I want, he probably says it like, I want to siphon your gas. This is a reference to vampires, which I'm not sure that one's an huh. adult joke. The, I mean, if we're counting Piston you know, Cup as an adult joke, then we have to count that, I guess. But like vampires existing aren't an adult concept. And like suck blood is like, I don't know, just because it says suck. It doesn't mean it's no, an it's, adult thing. It's it's more just like it, th- those two are on the opposite end of the spectrum of okay, so vampires are monsters, and monsters are kind of like for an older audience in general, because like typically you'll see monsters in rated R movies and whatnot. And the other one is the opposite, where it's clearly a, a children's joke, but it's a dirty word. So like the other one is oh, they they said piss. Yeah, I'm not gonna, it's I don't think ha ha pee pee poo poo piss anyway. Yeah, pee pee poo poo. I'm an adult. I'm gonna laugh at that. It's like okay, so that's a very childish definition of an adult joke versus a very adult version of an adult joke because like oh yeah, it's it's just a boring old thing that adults will probably like. Oh yeah vampires that's a thing yeah that's it for that one the other one i was going to maybe do was was at world of cars drive slash wiggy slash category colon race fans and it's just you know there are two things i really liked about it the first is that there are 69 nice cars listed <laughs> uh and then the other one is just at the top before it lists the race fans uh it says race fans is the title category page and then, like, the body of it is just all the race fans. That's hmm. it. <laughs> it's just, that's what this page is. It's all the race fans. Which, I don't know, I thought that was funny. I mean, that so can't be true, because there are thousands of them. Yeah, come on. We know. We've seen the movies. Name mm-hmm. every one of the cars in the every shot at the end of one. Cars 3. All right, so. Yeah. All right, in, in racing, one thing that you notice in Cars 3 is that one of the parts he needs to have replaced, well, well, when he gets to a certain speed, he starts rattling. That's a thing that yeah. happens in cars as they get older. It's just 
the balance gets a little off the uh, metal starts to warp slightly and whatnot and i feel like that is a very replaceable part because it's just like an axle like even if it's the suspension, you can just get the suspension replaced. Yeah, when cars get older, they rattle when they go fast because, like, I don't know, they haven't been given a thorough once-over to just, like, tighten things and replace things. But when it, you're, like, a living being, I don't know. That's the thing you gotta that? get done. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if you're, like, just walking pretty fast and all of a sudden your body started vibrating because you were walking too fast? You'd go to the hospital for that. Yeah, yeah, I cer- I certainly would. <laughs> there are people in this world who wouldn't, uh, both for just you know, dumb reasons and perfectly understandable insurance related it- reasons. But not perfectly understandable. Understandable why they wouldn't, but not understandable yeah. why that exists. No, I think they've listened enough and know about enough about my politics to know how I feel about the current state of it, uh, ins- health insurance in this country. But you're mm-hmm. absolutely right to point that out. I'm just going to throw this out there. I have a Go car that yes. starts to rattle pretty pretty violently at about 60 miles an hour, but not at like 70. Hmm. It's, I think, Good. this weird natural frequency thing where whatever degradation has happened to it affects it at a very specific speed. Not higher than that. Not lower than that. It's just like at 60 is when it starts to like have trouble before i say this understand as i'm sure you do anyway i have no idea what i'm talking about all right but could it could it be that like i assume it's an automatic transmission Mm -hmm. could it be that it's in a certain gear that it does that it's in that gear for a lot more than the like five miles per hour that it shakes okay i figured that that wouldn't be it but it was my thought and i wanted to say it and i'm an american so I was going to do that. That's your right and your responsibility. I want to. I still don't understand how racing would be exciting in this world. Well, John, I'm. So, I was going to get back to that myself because I will say, if you watch the racing scenes from Cars, stuff happens. Like uh, Cruz will drive on the wall for a second and then do a full flip over another car, and Lightning will do like a giant leap off of a crashed car over several other ones and then tie a race by sticking his tongue out slightly or like i was gonna uh, bring that up yeah which one that doesn't seem like how that should work but it's whoever (laughs) you should have that initial part of the finish line first and they all were there at the exact same time the odds of that are just astronomically unlikely but Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever but like if in either like track and field or NASCAR, like if if in like the five thousand meter race, I could count on like maybe seeing one of them like do a wall run and a uh, side flip over their competitors to to like get in front of them or <laughs> fully jump on a runner who has fallen down to jump over other runners who have fallen down or the car equivalents of this, those would be pretty interesting sports. Like the stuff that actually factually happens in these races is usually fairly interesting. Lucas, I gotta, I gotta refute your point with two examples. One of which is I have to say that it clearly in Canon, this sort of exciting thing is extremely rare because that's fair. When Lightning crossed that finish line and tied the race by using his tongue, one of the least exciting things you see in all of your examples, probably the least exciting, that was a big deal for like that entire racing season. That was a highly publicized event of, oh, he did this with his tongue. So clearly, like the flips aren't common at all. And then you you talk about how this sort of If you could see people just extremely rarely do jumps over people or flips, that would be exciting. That's happened in football. No, yeah. And we were in high school in football. We were in high school and like famously this dude like jumped or did a flip over another dude and then just like kept going. And it was insanely exciting. And then they made it illegal to do that. 
I think that helps my point in that everyone loved when that happens and it's clearly legal in cars in the cars verse to do that kind of bonkers shenanigans i don't know Um, if it is though i feel like if it were common enough that you could see people attempting to do it in more than like once in 30 years i imagine that would result in it being banned because the problem was this really cool jump over someone flip happened and then people started trying to do that and so many people got hurt doing that. And it would be the exact same in the Cars world of, oh, someone sees uh, this Cruz Ramirez new racer hotshot do it once. So they try and do it and they immediately die. That's fair. I would say just the fact that we see Lightning do like two or three of these things in like a season in Cars 1. And even just the fact that like... and. I'm going to also use this to partially refute your first point of how rare they are. I feel like every race we've seen, like that's actually been fully shown in the Cars and Planes movies, some like bonker shenanigans goes on. And that's because it's a, a movie and they have to make it interesting. But like I said earlier, we have our show is making that into why that is in the universe. So I would say that that stuff is legal and happens fairly like maybe once a race which is still like a lot to watch like a three and a half hour race but like i don't know man if i saw a car intentionally do that once in the indy 500 if i was just watching like accidentally i'd be like you know i might tune in next year (laughs) if does this happen and if people are like yeah maybe like once a time i gotta disagree because Every single time it happens, it's big deal. Like, in Cars 1, him sticking his tongue out was a huge deal. And in Cars 3, she did that flip because she saw it happen once 30 years ago, and it gave her the idea. Yes, but I think it's a big deal to sports people in that, in the same way that, like, every single week on SportsCenter, they do a top 10 uh and you see like some bonkers play every single week that they talk about for a while just because there are so many games played that and these are people with incredible incredible talents that they're going to do like incredible bonkers things because that's how they get stuff done and they're able to do it and since the cars clearly have more like ability to do these sort of flips and jumps and shenanigans and they are talented enough to do them and talented enough to do them in a advantageous way and they want to win. I'm going to say they, they, again, I'm not saying it happened. I'm not even going to say it happens every single race, but it happens enough to make it exciting. And sometimes there's a grand world pre and like some spy stuff happens, some car engines blow up. And during one of the races, a tow truck gets a rocket on him and there are a bunch of goons following through him through half of it. And that's pretty cool. I, if I saw the London race at the end of Cars 2, but either, again, translated to people or to actual car racing, I would be dedicated to that sport for the rest of my life. <sighs> See, this is one of those scenarios where people complain about how, oh, this person keeps surviving and it's just because they're the main character. And it's kind of the reverse of that is true. It's not this person isn't surviving because they're the main character. They're the they're main, main character, character because, because yeah. they're surviving. And yeah. like these movies, the races you see, you're only seeing these races because these are the important races where crazy stuff happens. You're not seeing the 10 years of Lightning McQueen's career where he's just a pretty good racer who is able to bob and weave in a race effectively. I'm saying, like, these crazy stunts have to be rare, and pretty much every time it has ever happened, we've seen it. I get that, and I'm not saying you're wrong. I would go so far to say that, like, if you just fully just, like, looked at it objectively, it's probably true. But the fact the fact still remains that these are the only races we've seen 
these this is the only evidence we have of how racing works in this universe so while i agree that like probably the races are pretty normal we don't have any evidence of that okay that's that's true and the problem is it's true enough how else I'll agree are you that gonna make these like... things exciting because quite frankly you mentioned that uh like play of the, the top 10 things of the week that's over like all sports yeah and this is one sport and it seems to be pretty much their only sport hey so I, I don't know also Rocket League and also Demolition Derbies, but I don't feel like Rocket League or Demolition Derbies are going to be legal sports. No, yeah, Rocket League would end up basically being a Demolition Derby. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. I feel like I've at least laid proper groundwork, at least as well as we have for some other points we've made in why racing is so popular. All right, and I'm just going to, at the last moment, I'm going to say what I think the real world equivalent might look like. And that's if you're watching a baseball game and someone swings that bat and it just explodes. That's kind of the equivalent of like an engine exploding. But then you have to do it. Oh, like five or six times in one game. And also there are spies running on the diamond. Does the ball explode when he hits it or up in the air? Because one is cool and one is tragic. I'm thinking is the queen the, there? <laughs> I'm thinking the baseball bat explodes and splinters fly everywhere. And he temporarily hurts his hands and then gets repaired and he's fine. And the queen is there for some reason. And the bat gets just too close to the queen for comfort. <laughs> After we know it's a bomb. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure, I love it. And they're all drinking Gatorade that makes the bats explode. (laughs) Ooh, okay. No, that could... Sometimes baseball players cheat and put cork inside their baseball bat, which makes them hit better for reasons that I've looked up before, but I don't fully understand. It may just make it lighter so they can swing it faster or it makes it bouncier or something. I don't know. So maybe they put something like that. Yeah. Can't do that. You super can't do that. They get mad at you if you do that. Reasonable. Yeah, it's cheating. You want to end the podcast? (laughs) Let's end the podcast. Love it. Thanks for listening. It was cool that you did that. I feel like I say it was cool or it was really cool that you did that every week. But like, I don't know. I mean it every week. It means a lot to us that you tune in and you listen to us sort of take a while to get to what we're trying to talk about each week. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just don't. Yeah, we got there in the end this time, but I was not certain we were going to it did take us an entire episode to get to it though yeah the other stuff was i don't know hopefully entertaining i'm talking about last week's episode oh no that was uh, that's also true yep all right uh remember to like comment subscribe and tell everyone about the podcast and uh download it a few times on every single podcast app you can uh really throw our numbers up there and uh that'd be great open a few Open a few tabs on your computer, uh, go to our first episode on a few different sites like Anchor, Spotify, etc. You know the sites. Uh, and then just mute your computer, leave it running, uh, turn it to two times speed, and then leave it running all night. Also on YouTube. Explode. Yes, mm-hmm. of course. We do want to get them we want to get trending on YouTube, I guess. On every account <laughs> you have social media wise, just have a yes. post about our podcast and that'll be great. Do a Facebook watch party. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing? Host that watch thing, parties. Right? Uh, we can, if you want, we can organize like a premiere for an episode on YouTube and then you can have a listening party. It'll be great. Quite frankly, I don't want to do that. So we're not going to do that. But I mean, if anyone asks us, us to, we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to say if exactly five people ask us to do it, we'll do it. Uh, if you want us to do that, for some reason, it doesn't sound that cool. Uh, but if you want us to do that, you can tweet at us at the Kachat or you can email us uh, the Kachat at gmail.com. Both of those are one word. That is all we say. So I'm Lucas Southworth. And I'm John Bishop. And until next time, remember to float like a Cadillac and sting like a beamer. Tiny See you in the podcast. Yes, I'm just going to leave this going. You're saving me at least 45 seconds. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
in like the edit later tonight. <laughs> you thought I was gonna stop recording a lot sooner, but I didn't. But I'm going to now. Bye. <laughs>